Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from St. John's and today I have the privilege to interview Ryan McCarthy from Indianapolis. Hi Ryan, how are you doing? Meher, I'm doing very well. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for being here. So Ryan saw the importance of sharing the culture of good process after creating the importance and our catch arrived. So <laughs> and it's sitting in the notes that I have. Okay, here we go back again. So I love okay, it. Okay, yes. <laughs> All right. All right, Mr. Andrew. Making an, <laughs> making an entrance. All right. Okay. It's wonderful. Yes, he wants to be in the broadcast. Absolutely. Okay, so where were we? Okay. Ryan saw the importance of sharing the culture of good process after creating and implementing a successful culture of good at the largest version wireless authorized retailer in the nation including over 6 million in the community investments. So, and now he trains uh, and certifies business leaders as culture champions to help lead their organization in building, engaging cultures of good. So let's start from that. So why cultural import, uh, why importance of culture from a job seekers perspective and how they can reach if this culture is good for them or not? Yeah, you know, uh, culture impacts everything and everything impacts culture. Mm -hmm. And so I really appreciate, first of all, you having me on your show specifically, because as job seekers are looking for where do I want to work and who yeah. do I want to work for, the culture is who are we? So yes. when you think, who do I want to work for? You're not asking, uh, what does the company do? You're not asking, uh, what products do they uh, manufacture or what, you know, what you're asking is who are they? Who yeah. do I want to work for? The culture is the who. It's mm -hmm. who we are. It's how most people, as we describe it, feel, believe, and behave most of the time. And so if you're going to feel a connection at your work and engaged and that your contribution matters, yes. it matters to work in a culture that appreciates hard work, that uh, acknowledges and promotes from within and gives mm -hmm. opportunity for growth. And so job seekers are looking for these specifics. Yes. Uh, is the culture understaffed? Is the culture uh, domineering leadership, right? Mm -hmm. in some, if you want to work in that type of environment, then that's what you look for. Because culture is a, is a really, uh, I guess... Uh, fancy way of saying environment in a sense yeah. it's it's the essence of what that company is and so as you've heard stories and many job seekers uh have stories themselves of working in toxic environments yes that's what we would say we would say that even within a toxic environment it impacts your well-being it impacts your mental health um it impacts your stress it impacts whether uh you go to work and enjoy that work during the day, or if you yeah. be feeling exhausted. So even physically, uh, it has an impact on you. So culture, we would say impacts everything and everything within the organization. First of all, it's leadership impacts the culture. So when you find a good culture, you found good leaders. Yeah. And uh, in one of my previous guests, uh, he mentioned that they started any meeting they start, they start with one of the cultural values and how that should be implemented in the decision making or how that's being implemented in the meeting. So do you agree with that statement? Uh, I, I agree with that. And I would take it to the level of saying that if the values are more than just a list on a wall or a website. Okay. Yes. If if they are now success indicators as to whether we're winning or losing as a business. So so, for instance, if if a business is winning, then they're living up to their values. And, and because they're living up to their values, that's how they measure the success of the company beyond being solvent and financially mm -hmm. stable and uh, profitable. Because the first rule of business is to stay in business and to know why you're in business. Yeah. And so it's really important that those values become more than aspirational statements. Yeah. They need to be, this is what you asked. When we talk about job seekers looking for a job, we're saying, 
who who is it that I want to work for and why do I want to work there? Well, we want to we want to love where we work. We want to love what we do, love the people that we work with, love the people we work for. There needs to be that component in there. And so if that's what you value as a person, then that company living up to its values matters tremendously. And so, yes, yeah, certainly huddles, meetings, get it off the wall and get it into the vocabulary uh, and the language of the business because every culture, regardless of what culture you're talking about, has its own language, its own, it's the words that are spoken. When I lived in New York for the first time, I went to get a soda pop and I asked for a pop and they were like, pop, we don't know what a pop is. I was from Indiana. We called soda pop there. And so, (laughs) but when I got to New York, I learned it was soda. And for me to get a soda, I, and so when I move into a new, new experience or a new environment, mm-hmm. a work environment, for those that are job seekers that you speak to, specifically your audience, what, what we're saying is, are when you, when you read the values, are you reading them on a website or are you watching them through the example of their leadership? And are they talked about? Is it part of everyday discussion? Because if it's not prioritized Mm -hmm. throughout the organization, if it's not a driving force of the organization, then what you essentially have are aspirational statements to make people feel good. But when you have true values, they actually are virtues. They're what you're known by. Yeah. See, that's the key. Getting it from a value to a virtue means that we have to live what we say every yes. single day. We're not going to be perfect at it because no one is and no team is perfect and no organization is perfect. But how do we continue to live up to our values? And as long as we're living up yeah. to our values, while we're making money, we're going to do business really well. Yeah. Those are great tips, Ryan. Thank you very much. So for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Ryan a couple of questions. And I'm going to post them on a daily basis, kind of a journey with us. You can share, like, and put comments. So tune in next time for another great question with Ryan.